Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Mystics are those who have a super connection with God. They are not so otherworldly for they are rooted in this world and they can see and hear and feel the presence of God wherever they are, wherever they turn. Yes, the fullness of human existence is the experience of mysticism. one of our super favorite saints, Saint Francis of Assisi. Now everyone in the world has been blessed and knows this one saint. This one saint is not just another name in the litany. Well, even as we were little children, we thought of Saint Francis of Assisi. And mind you, there is a journey to discovering this saint. And that first stage of the journey was when as little children, we look at him as some sort of Dr. Dolittle, who had this great connection with animals and nature. And then you have this beautiful movie, Brother Sun and Sister Moon, absolutely delightful movie that presents for us the radical transformation in the life of St. Francis of Assisi. As the movie shows us, he was this super worldly guy who becomes an otherworldly guy. So he's very handsome, historians attest to this. He's very witty, very gallant, and super delighted in the fine life, in fine clothes, in fine food, and like the youth, the other super rich youth of his city, of his town, he was involved in all that he should not have been involved in. And then you have this great transformation and he is like floating in the air and walking on the roof and, and singing beautiful songs and just touching the world by his beauty. And then there is a third stage in the discovery of St. Francis of Assisi. When you go to the Holy Land and you go to any church, any place of Christian worship, you will see on each place a emblem, an emblem, a logo of two hands. And one they will explain to you is the hand of the crucified Lord. And the other is the hand of the stigmatized altar Christus, second Christ, the hand of Saint Francis of Assisi. He's known as a second Christ because he was in such a great way a resemblance of our Lord Jesus. Friends, and this is where we are led into a deeper study of his life. You look at Saint Francis of Assisi, he was not such a otherworldly, a gentle, poetic type of fairy figure who floated through the world. Not at all. He was a very grounded, a very courageous young man. He dreamt big dreams and he was ready to pay any price to follow that dreams. Of course, as we all know, he came from a very wealthy family. His father was this super wealthy, miserly cloth merchant and his mother was this a fashionable French wife to the father and he as a young man dreamt of becoming a knight in shining armor. He wanted for his life greatness and therefore he pursued a career in warring. He goes out to war with that dream that he would one day achieve a great victory in war. He would be knighted. And when he returns to his town of Assisi on a white horse wearing that shining armor, people would shower him with flowers and he would be hailed. But reality turned out to be so different from his greatest dreams. And thank God, literally thank God for that. It is said that when he was on one of his 
war expeditions for the first time he hears the voice a divine voice a voice of god telling him do not serve the servant dedicate your life for the master and he knew this was something very different because it was a voice that pierced his heart but nevertheless he pursued his ambition to become a knight and from there we see there is a second significant moment when he goes out on one of his expeditions and he faces defeat he's captured and almost a year he is imprisoned in those dark hours of captivity he realizes the world is passing and he has to find something greater to live for and there is a third occasion again when he is on war when he has this very powerful vision and with this his life is transformed he comes back comes back and everyone thinks he is disoriented because he has completely set aside all his other dreams and he is committed to living for Jesus and it is said he would spend long hours in prayer secluded in little chapels here and there and he fell in love with Jesus when he fell in love with Jesus something else happened a new dimension came into his life where he was set free from fear and he fell in love with the poor it is said that he would sing to sister poverty he chose to wear the clothes of the poorest of peasants and this man this brave warrior who would go out to fight with sword and spear he was terribly afraid of lepers he was disgusted at their very sight and he would flee from them but in encountering christ he gets an eye to see jesus in the wounded lepers and he commits himself to caring for them he realizes that the greatest hope is in the word of god and he gathers young men the very young men who laughed at him the very young men who despised him for shunning his life of comfort these young men join him and he begins with them to go around preaching and how many hundreds and thousands of lives his preaching had touched finally we see when he opened himself to the word of god he began to experience and see god everywhere in nature even in those who were not of his faith and culture he would go on a mission of peace right to the war grounds in the middle east where the crusades were happening friends by the time he is 29 he has established a congregation a congregation established with the approval of the pope solely because of a divine intervention where the pope receives a vision seeing francis holding the church and then we see by the time he is 39 hundreds have joined his congregation today when we look at the church we must know the greatest number of religious are those who follow the franciscan spirituality 800 years have passed and his influence has only grown ever more powerful our pope realized that saint francis is the model the model and the answer for the church to respond to a suffering world no wonder he chose the name of saint francis well by the time he is 42 he has this great experience of a vision during one of his great long times of praying he has a vision where he sees an angel crucified at that moment it is said saint francis received the wounds of christ the stigmata by the time he is 44 he dies a rather lonely death a surprisingly lonely death the death that was so similar 
to the death of our Lord Jesus. Friends, when we look at the life of St. Francis of Assisi, there is one significant moment that nobody would miss out, no movie would miss out. And that is that moment when he is praying in that dilapidated church at San Damiano and he hears the clear voice of God telling him, go and build my church which is in ruins. Well, St. Francis of Assisi was not an architect. What was he? He was a defeated warrior. And yet, God saw in this warrior a thirst for greatness. God saw in him a fire, a courage, a determination where he would pursue that ideal of glory to its very end. Dear friends, St. Francis of Assisi was raised by God to build the church. Today, we can look at the world and say it is in ruins. We could perhaps look at certain things in the church and we could despair. And here is why we must know in that observation is a call by God. Build the church. Hear the voice of God. I am sure every one of you out there have heard the voice of God. At some moment when you opened the Bible, when you looked at nature, perhaps through some person or even through a painful experience, you heard the voice of God. Today, ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of that word because that's what Jesus said the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, will remind you all that I have spoken to you. And when you remember that, heed the voice of God. If you fulfill those little direction God gives you, he would be able to give you so much more that you and I and we all can build this world and this church for God's glory. To be able to hear the voice of God, we do not need to relocate ourselves by a beautiful riverside or by that countryside in Assisi. All we need to do is to enter the presence of God. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. And to be still means to wait, to wait and to still our inner person with that expectation that someone is going to talk and that someone is our God. Friends, let us now adore our Lord Jesus. As we adore him, we will experience the Holy Spirit writing God's word in our hearts. Come and worship royal priesthood Come and praise Him, holy nation, worship Jesus, our Redeemer, He is risen, King of glory, come and worship, royal priest. Holy nation, worship Jesus, our Redeemer, He is risen, King of glory. Precious Lord, you are come to us in the form of bread. We raise our hands up to you. We open our hearts to you, to worship you. We want to come to you, O oh God, worshipping and adoring in the beginning of this day. We want to begin our day in worship, in thanksgiving, looking at your face. Come and worship. Come and worship, royal priest. Come and praise Him, holy nation. Worship. 
worship Jesus, our Redeemer. He is risen, King of glory. Oh God, you sanctified us and made us a holy nation. You turned us to a royal priesthood. Royal priesthood, always worthy to come into your presence, to worship you, to sacrifice our life to you. This morning we come to you worshiping and adoring. Worship the Lord. Sing His praises, God's own people, for He called you out of darkness. Worship Jesus, our Redeemer, He is risen. Of glory. Our Redeemer, our precious Lord, you are present in the Holy Eucharist, assuring to us that you will be present at every moment of this day. And we worship you, we thank you, we adore you, O God. You have given us the grace and the privilege to begin the day in your presence. Looking at your face, we worship you, O oh God. Come to Jesus, taste his kindness in the Spirit. Bless the Father, worship Jesus. Precious King of Glory, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, O God. We adore you. Looking at your face, O God, we surrender the whole day in your hands that we may be able to see your face always, hear your word at every moment, that we may live out our day in your presence. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, My dear sisters and brothers, let us begin our day claiming a promise. Every day, the Lord has a promise to give us. A promise the Lord said He would always keep because the name of the Lord is faithfulness to promises. This morning, we want to claim the promise from Isaiah chapter 30 verses 20 and 21 and the promise goes like this though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet he will not hide his face anymore but you will your eyes will see him and your ears will hear a word behind you saying this is the way Walk in it. When you turn to the right or to the left, you will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Lord, we thank you for this promise. Your face will not remain hidden from our hearts. And the promise continues. Your ears will hear a word Lord, we want to hear a word from you whenever we make our decision, whenever we meet someone and we have to say a word, whenever someone hurts us and we get afflicted, we want to hear your word and you promises your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it when you turn to the right or to the left. Lord, when we travel in a car, 
there are instruments modern equipments to tell us where to turn which way to go because we know clearly the destination but there are no equipments speaking to us from outside of us but your love is there dwelling in our hearts whispering to our hearts turn this way turn that way every step lord we take shall be in the light of your word in the power of your spirit we claim this promise for us this day we will not spend by ourselves because you promises you will never leave us alone there could be problems we may have to face there could be things that that would hurt us and yet even if we have to eat the bread of adversity and drink the water of affliction your face will always be there before us and we will look at your face oh god and we will take delight in your love and we will follow your word lord show us your face let us never be left in the darkness of adversity in the darkness of uncertainty lord this our prayer this morning that we will want to see your face hear your word at every moment open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you. i want to see you lord i want to see Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 lord lord there will be there will be fascinating flashes of light around us there will be things drawing our eyes to them and yet to god the one face we want to see is your face the one voice we want to hear is your voice there are moments we will be drawn to the sweet voices of people to the distracting voices of people I don't want to be led astray in the wrong ways. Lord, let your voice be heard. Let be your voice be heard as a whisper in my heart. I will be attentive to that whisper of your word. And I want I would always to cry out holy, holy, holy. Open the ears of my heart. Open the ears of my heart I want to hear you I want to hear you Open the ears of my heart Lord Open the ears of my heart I want to hear you I want to hear you to hear your praises lifted high 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to hear your praises lifted high. Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Lord, I want to hear your voice Let not the voices of fear and anxiety from my heart disturb me your voice your voice that gentle voice that Elijah heard in the cave when Elijah heard that voice your voice in the cave at that moment of loneliness and distress Elijah was refreshed was strengthened Elijah could continue his walk for the Lord the journey to fulfill his mission Lord we want to hear your voice today. We want to see your face today. We want to live in your presence today. Holy Spirit, open my heart. Holy Spirit, pour out. Pour out your love into my heart that I may, I may not crave for wrong ways of love. Pour out your peace into my heart that I may not long for the distractions of evil pleasures Lord, Holy Spirit, pour out, pour out your love, pour out your peace, pour out your joy. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your Jesus, spirit. Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on us Jesus, pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit on us Jesus, pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit on us. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. For this moment of grace. This moment of this experience of your presence. This great feeling that you are there for us. Let that strengthening feeling remain with us the whole day. Give us your blessing, O oh Lord. Your blessing. Your blessing that will be there with us all through this day your blessing of God as you blessed the children who came to you the children come to me you said and you took them up in your hands and you blessed them let your blessing fill our hearts with your presence and your joy bless us oh God bless the Lord oh my soul my soul and worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul and worship your holy name so sad and 
want your dreams to be take your time go slowly small beginnings greater ends heartfelt joys are holy that's a beautiful song from brother sun sister moon i may have got the words a little different but saint francis says start by doing what is necessary then do what is possible and you will find yourself doing the impossible friends this is a journey to mysticism this is a journey to that super connection with god today let us seek to remember to hear the voice of god and to heed the voice of god and as you begin to heed the voice of god doing what is necessary you'll soon find yourself led to that place where you will be doing the impossible for the glory of god god bless you and may you have a most brilliant and beautiful and blessed day with jesus The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged the destitute women the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families if you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of alms giving we invite you to send your love offering to divine charitable trust cd account number 04022318 00014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi branch IFSC code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divine retreat center at gmail.com